The following video is part of a special week celebrating the release of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Subscribe if you'd like to keep up with everything, and drop a like if you, you know, tolerate me. At the time of release, Man of Steel was a fairly divisive movie. Personally, I was always on board with this version of Superman, still forming an identity and figuring out who he is while getting beaten up in an IHOP. Reminds me of my own formative experiences that made me who I am today, like the one I had last week when I got beaten up in an IHOP. Not everyone saw eye to eye with me, though. Several things pop up frequently. That Superman was too destructive when better trained military experts threw him through buildings. Or that Jonathan Kent's decisions to let Clark reveal himself to the world on his own terms uh, just left too much free will, yo. Should have reprogrammed his brain into Supermaning like they did back in the 70s. Why yes, I am being unfair, trying to ruffle some feathers. You caught me. These other points can certainly inspire some nuanced discussions, but I already titled the video as, quote, that moment, and so have no choice but to focus in on only one thing. That is singular, after all. So, if you somehow haven't seen, heard, or even smelt of this moment by now, or if you've recently run headfirst into a concrete statue in order to experience your favorite stories for the first time for the second time, I will have to warn you that there will be spoilers Superman snaps Zod's neck. Jesus, Charlie, there is no way anyone who wanted to click away had a chance to do so. Why are you being a dick today? Having destroyed General Zod's only chance of remaking Krypton, and with it, Zod's metaphorical soul, Zod decides he's going to keep trying to murder literally everyone until Superman puts him out of his misery, finally cornering a family with his heat beams to force Superman's hand. It's a classic case of suicide by cop, except this cop is actually friendly to other races. This description alone is perfectly sufficient to justify Superman's actions in a philosophical manner. Morally speaking, if someone is about to murder someone innocent, and you can only guarantee the innocent safety by killing their assailant, you should pull a Nike and fucking end them. But comic book fans don't want a nuanced depiction of moral philosophy played out to a reasonable conclusion. They want their colorful mascot to do the same thing their colorful mascot did on paper decades ago. So this isn't even my real argument. Get out of here, philosophy. We're looking at the time Superman straight up murdered Zod in the comics, and honestly, it was less justified there. Turn back the clock to 1988 with Superman number 22, they had just recently changed the numbering. For the record, Superman had more than 22 issues between 1938 and 1988. To make a not very long story short, Superman encounters a General Zod plus two other Kryptonians, Zayora and Quexol, whose name is dumb, who are all from a pocket dimension. These three have already murdered everyone on their world, some of them rather graphically. As dangerous as these three are, Superman has no choice, and in the heat of battle, he permanently depowers them with gold kryptonite and then throws them all in a big steel box. Zod gives him a big ol' smirk and promises that he will get his powers back, he will come to Superman's Earth, and he will kill Superman and also everyone else. Let me recap, Superman has three dudes whom the story has established are permanently depowered inside of a steel box which is, like anything else made of steel, unbreakable to three non-powered dudes, and the unbreakable steel box is inside a pocket universe where everyone else is dead, so there is no one who can break them out or then help them also break through a dimensional barrier. And you know what? Devil's advocate. Even if someone outside in the normal universe did come and break them out of all of this, what are they gonna do? Say, here, you three take this gun and use it to kill 5.1 billion people and also Superman who is bulletproof? But on the other hand, Zod did make an empty threat, so Superman calls them worse than Hitler, which is technically correct in this instance, and executes the three defenseless dudes with green kryptonite. At least they have a quick and painless death from it. Nah, I'm just pulling your leg. It's a slow enough death that Quexel, whose name is dumb, tries to strangle Zod to death before the kryptonite kills them, and a painful enough death that Zayora offers to be Superman's sex slave if only he'll stop executing her slowly and painfully with kryptonite. So yeah, pretty clear precedent for Man of Steel's moment, except Man of Steel actually put more effort into why it was doing it. I'd be tempted to source an earlier theatrical example, too, where the Superman 2 Superman depowers Zod and Co and then drops them to their deaths in a fucking pit. But the director's cut fixed that by Superman time traveling so the villains do survive, and if I start to criticize a movie for a theatrical release that was later fixed when the original director's vision was allowed to re-replace the replacement director's vision, the radiating irony would leave me begging to be a sex slave as I died on the floor. 
or um something like that. <laughs> <laughs>